joined now by a man who knows this state very well, former New York Governor George Pataki, who's endorsed Governor Kasich. Governor, thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Nice being on with you. Donald Trump tweeted out this. We know tweeting is one of his favorite forms of communicating. He said Kasich only looks okay in polls against Hillary Clinton because nobody views him as a threat and therefore have placed zero negative ads against him. He and others have made the point that John Kasich has only won his home state. And you heard from a potential voter there who's wondering why is he still in the race at this point. After tonight, even with a second place, where do you see the next point of victory for this campaign? Well, I think there's a, a good shot in Pennsylvania and other parts of, of the country as well. But the big thing is today, and I'm hopeful that Governor Kasich will come in a strong second. And not just that, but he could win, actually win, a handful of districts and um, take uh, delegates that would be his delegates at the convention. There is no path, it's quite clear, for John Kasich to have a majority of the delegates between here and the convention. But if he goes into the convention with enough momentum, and as you just indicated, he's the only Republican. Republican candidate who ju doesn't just beat Hillary Clinton, he trounces Hillary Clinton in the general election. I think those delegates are going to look and say who can win, who can govern successfully, and it's John Kasich. What's interesting when our new NBC News uh, Wall Street Journal poll asked that question regarding who should be the nominee, 62% say the person with the most votes. You just made uh, the case um, against Governor Kasich based on what these potential Republican voters would like to see happen. He would not be the person with the most votes going in. Let me make a very clear point here. Donald Trump is not going to be president of the United States. If he is the nominee, he will be crushed by uh, Hillary Clinton or whoever the Democrat is. Um, the question is, does he drive the Republican Party off a cliff before we realize he's not going to be the president? The more important question is who could be president, and if we give him the opportunity, a great president. And there's no question in my mind that that is John Kasich. You know. Um, maybe he's not in first place in the polls. Maybe he's going to be in second place. Uh, but it's, it's about choosing the leader of the United States of America. It's not about who's ahead in the polls at this point or who won a primary a few months back. If we get to the convention and the delegates are free to choose, to ask yourself two questions. Who can win this race? And when they win the race, who can best govern America, lead us together? And that is Governor John Kasich. So essentially, if I can just paraphrase here, nothing matters until the convention and John Kasich sees himself as potentially someone who will go in, hopefully holding up the NBC poll saying, this is what the NBC poll said regarding a head-to-head -head matchup with Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders, and therefore, I am your guy. Is that his basic strategy here? Uh, it's part of the strategy, but the other part is that he can actually lead this country. It's not just about winning the election. You have to do that, but it's about governing success. John Kasich has done that in, in Ohio very, very well, bringing Democrats and Republicans together. And if he has the chance, he will do it in America. And let me just make one point. Americans seem to be divided, but it's because it starts at the top with a political leadership that divides for their own interest. John Kasich brings people together in the country's interest. And that's what we need in a leader. And that's why I believe he should be the next president of the United States. And, and while you believe that based on voting, the party, the people that you represent, they don't believe it. So when you go into a convention, are you then saying that the voters don't matter, no. but an NBC poll does no. that shows no. John Kasich no. doing better against Hillary Clinton? Not at all. What matters are, are the, is the judgment of the people there as to who they think can best lead the country. You know, if you're going by your criteria, Abraham Lincoln was a distant third or fourth or fifth when the convention chose him. That worked out pretty well. Well, that comparison. convention told, I've heard picked that. Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, that worked out pretty well as well. Uh, yeah. I'm not av adverse to having a, a convention come together, look at who can lead the country best, and it's John Kasich. Yeah, but I guess the essence of what I am saying, and, and you rightfully bring up Abraham Lincoln, and I've heard a lot of Republicans bring that as an example. But with that said, um, set aside those two examples in history, the overarching message from the people, or at least that the people are receiving, is that their votes do not no, matter by no, the no. millions. And let me finish the question. And as you pointed out, what happens with the delegate, the people that the party trusts, uh, will make the better decision.
<laughs> than the people. Do you not see that? That how people, not 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 journalists, your own party, some within your own party believe that to be the case. The primary process often reflects the views of a percentage of the registered voters in a party who come out to vote. Not all the registered voters in that party. You know, we have the primary in New York today, and I'm hopeful Governor Kasich will actually win a handful of districts and come in second in a number of districts. But uh, probably the majority of registered Republicans aren't going to vote today. Uh, and so does that mean that we're going to let a minority, if they don't constitute a majority, decide that we're going to drive the Republican Party off a cliff? Or are we going to exercise our best intelligent judgment as to who can lead the party and lead the country? I think it's the second part. We're not supposed to suspend our brains uh, once someone has voted. You engage and look to see who can lead best, and that's Governor John Kasich. But, Governor, just quickly again as a follow-up here, as someone who is seen as a part of the establishment, when you say use their best brain or, or your knowledge and intelligence, there are everyday Republicans all around this state who will read that as saying, you don't know. We know what's best for you. We know, not you, everyday working man and woman in Staten Island who may support a candidate that you don't. Uh, not at all. I, I very much respect. There will be a lot of people who come out in the Republican primary and vote for Donald Trump. And I respect that because what they are saying is they are angry at Washington. They believe the political class in Washington doesn't act in the interest of the people. And I agree with them. But the solution is not Donald Trump. He will not be president. The solution is, is Governor Kasich, who, if he's nominated, would be president. I am enormously respectful for the political process. The political process says if a majority majority of the delegates are behind a candidate, that candidate is the nominee. If Donald Trump has a majority of the delegates, he'll be the nominee. If he doesn't have a majority the of the delegates, then it's free for the delegates at that convention to take another look. And I think they should take but another it, look. And, and, and I get what you are saying in the process and in the allegations of it being rigged that Donald Trump has made. Those assertions are not true. This is what's been in place. However, going back to saying we respect the people, we respect the process, but the delegates know what's best. That these people who take no. off from work, who reschedule and go in to vote for a candidate that you are not supporting, <laughs> that they don't know what's best for the party. This is, I'm no, only no, telling no. you what Republican voters, and I know you're aware of this, this is how they are processing it. And therefore, when they look at the establishment, and if this plays out against them, this further divides the establishment from the people. And if it's not <laughs> Donald Trump or Ted Cruz that's the outsider who prevails, it is another outsider eventually that will challenge the establishment who is essentially telling them they don't know what's best for them. No, what you are saying okay. is if that less than a majority, less than half of the Republican primary voters or caucus voters have chosen uh, Donald Trump, that the majority who voted for someone else cannot choose someone else, that they're obligated to support the candidate who got less than half but more than the others. I don't think that makes sense. And when you talk about division at a convention, look at the Democratic Party. Eight of the nine last contests were won by Bernie Sanders. He trounces Hillary time and again, and yet their system is stacked, where because of superdelegates and the way the system is rigged, it's highly unlikely that Hillary won't be the nominee. And I think you're going to see far more dissatisfaction when Hillary's team steals the Democratic nomination from Bernie Sanders among Bernie Sanders voters than you will if a majority of Republican delegates supporting well, Governor, the opinion of a majority respect, of Republicans choose someone that. other than Donald Trump. Yeah. Well, I think with all due respect, Governor, people will see that pivot to the conversation of Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton as an attempt not to address what's happening within your own party, which <laughs> may be an historic and consequential divide between the Republican Party. But I always appreciate you joining us, and I know there will be many more conversations ahead. As John Kasich says, he is in this all the way to the great city of Cleveland. Thank you so much. Great pleasure to have you on. Thank you. Good Thank being you. on with you. Of course. Well, hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.